In this video, I want to take a look at disaggregating student learning outcomes using Canvas and Data Studio dashboards. The genesis of this particular video comes from a team report to the College of Marshall Islands. Uh, and in that team report, one of the recommendations was that the college expand disaggregation into collection and analysis of data on outcomes and achievement to better represent the diverse pop subpopulations of students. The, uh, the uh, CMI, the courses are approved by the curriculum process, SLOs, PLOs. They're using Nuventive Improve. That caught my eye. They're using Nuventive Improve to track their SLOs and ISLOs. And so that caught my eye. And the team observed that CMMI disaggregates data on student learning outcomes and student achievement based on gender. And they, the disaggregation of outcomes and analysis uh, uh, will help identify performance gaps among diverse student populations. Putting those three statements together uh, reminded me that here in our new event of Improve that we also use. If I come down, you'll see that we track the number of students assessed. We track gender, but we do not track anything else. This is a entered post hoc. It's additional work for faculty, and it's not real-time data. One other small detail. You'll notice that 15 students succeeded, 6 females and 9 males, out of a total of 19. We do not know if the four students who did not succeed are male or female, so we have no way of knowing things like the percentage of females who are succeeding or the percentage of males who are succeeding. That's inherent in our recommended data entry for uh, our Nuventive Improve that we currently have. So we do have success rates for male and female students, but we don't know how many females and how many males we had, and we can't disaggregate by anything other than male and female. Uh, so I, I have to think that uh, CMI is, has a very similar dashboards to what we have. So if I switch over to Canvas, in Canvas the learning outcomes are stored in an institutional bank of student learning outcomes. You can see here SC130 Physical Science Course Level Learning Outcome 3 stored at the institutional level along with all the other courses. This is part of a store of all of the course learning outcomes of the college that is being built inside Canvas. These learning outcomes are then imported to a course. From a course, they can be added to rubrics that are then attached to assignments. This is a rubric that marks my lab reports. There's the course learning outcome. Five points optimal, four points sufficient, three points suboptimal, zero points, no evidence that the learning outcome has been demonstrated. No, uh, or achieved, optimal achievement, sufficient achievement, suboptimal, or developing some capability but uh, not yet sufficient. These can also, these outcomes can also be attached to a, uh, a mathematical, these are mathematical models outcomes can be attached to a questions learning bank. Here we see SC130 mastery set at 80%, and these are a series of bank bank questions. It can then be used in quizzes and tests. So two sources that I'm pulling outcomes from. Now all I do as an instructor is give quizzes and tests. The, te the questions automatically feed back to the assigned learning outcome and I mark lab reports and I'll be clicking on one of these boxes in each lab report along with other criteria and that all flows back to the institutional level. From the institutional level that's it. As a faculty, that's all I do. I do my regular job. I don't do anything else. I mark papers. I check tests. Um, the institution can then pull the learning outcomes out from the institutional level if they were course learning outcomes from the institutional bank and generate data like this. Here you see student learning outcome three. Much as we could do it certainly in, in, in track that. The, but here I get an average. I can also tell that there were 2,388 total evaluations of this outcome to date in summer 2021. That may seem like a lot, but remember, it's comprised of marking lab reports, 433 instances, 
This is the number of students times the number of lab reports turned in. It appears on each lab report that involves this particular student learning outcome. Or I can look at quizzes. Now, this is tools. The CMI report notes that uh, um, uh, they're actually tracking their tools. Uh, I don't see how we track these sort of tools, but where the outcome comes from. But with Canvas, we can know where those outcomes came from. It's fully interactive. Uh, if I reset uh, any particular one, I can uh, click on any any other thing that I want to look at. Maybe I'll drill down to a. I want to look at which ones are feeding general education outcome 3.2, and I can see course level outcome two, course level and MS 150, course level learning outcome two, course learning outcome, and SC 130. Point three, both feed into this general education learning outcome and on into institutional learning outcomes. So I have, uh, I can sit and analyze, I can drill up, drill down, and, and other sorts of things. Let me reset those. But the disaggregating by other diverse student factors, I can do that because my data is not being entered post hoc. This is, this film is being made during the term. This is near real-time data. As often as I want to update the data, it's updatable. Currently, it's being updated weekly. This is the end of week five, summer term. Uh, there's a 2088. There's just course learning outcomes. There's the performance by major. That's performance by major. And again, I can say, well, I only want to see performance by major on assignments. And I can do that. Or I only want to look at one course. I can look at gender, average by gender, there's a, a small difference there. And here again, I'm not looking at a binary, they completed or they didn't complete. I have both the, um, both. So I can disaggregate the data by any variable that's in the student information system. Another dashboard here, you can see uh, I'm cross-tabulating state by major uh, but here too again, I can, if I wish, look at, okay, I just want to look at business administration majors. I've got seven students there generating 588 records across two courses. I just want to look at how the business students are doing in MS-150 statistics. Okay. I'm down to five students. They're actually all female students. Um, the data's telling me that. These are telling me the averages. These little numbers on the side are telling me the averages uh, for each of these sub populations that I'm starting to look at down here. So these are just the performance of female business administration students. I can disaggregate by any particular population I want to. If I do want to look at, say, I see something that's a little lower that I want to change, I'll reset this. I can say, oh, this number, well, how are the students from YAP doing? The students from YAP are all in MS-150 statistics, there's seven of them. Uh, we got 412 records in, uh, and this is their performance for just the students from YAP. So I can disaggregate, slice and dice by any particular variable that I, I want to analyze my data by. Well, that's all I wanted to do in this particular video is address this, uh, this, this disaggregation by other variables. If the variable is in the student information system, we can uh, use Canvas's outcomes data to provide real-time data. No extra work for faculty. They do the regular marking. This is all of this flows out from the back end of the learning management system at the administrative level. Um, these dashboards are in Google Data Studio that allow us to visualize and manipulate the data and explore the data interactively so that I can look at data by any slice and dice I want to. And uh, thank you for listening and I, I think this would be a path forward for, for disaggregating data and looking at those variables that, that you want to look at while reducing workload on faculty and producing data in real time so that, you know, this is during the term. I can still go back and help the students that are the subpopulations that I've identified as needing assistance. I can reach out to the other campuses and say these, we, we've identified that uh, these, there's a, 
there's a need for assistance in your area. So, and we can look at the tools that they came from. Thank you very much.